Hello, my name is Eric Knorr. And I'm Hugo Kalber. For our project, we decided to take a look at sponges, specifically their economic importance in Southeast Asia, which is an area both Hugo and I enjoy traveling to. We will first give a brief overview of what a sponge is, followed by how sponges affect the traditional Chinese medicine market, and then finish off with the importance of sponges in sea farming communities within Southeast Asia. Before diving deeper into the importance, I think it's imperative to understand what a sponge is and how it works. The sponge's phylum is called peripheral. Sponges reproduce by sexual reproduction in the process of spawning. When male and female sex cells are released directly into the water, sponges have both sexes in one organism, but only produce one type of gamete per spawning event. Sponges also regenerate from fragments, which is a type of asexual reproduction. Sponges are the simplest multicellular animals, basically just a colonial grouping of cells. They are also sessile, which means non-moving filter feeders. Special cells called collar cells allow the sponge to filter feed. The spicules are tiny pieces of glass or calcium, which function as skeleton of a sponge. Sponges feed in a very interesting manner, and the following video will help explain it more clearly. Sponges have two layers. The outside layer is called the ectoderm. The inside layer, made up of collar cells, is called the endoderm. Peripheral means pore bearer. The sponges have thousands of incurrent pores that bring water, nutrients, and oxygen into the sponge. They also have one excurrent pore called an osculum. The osculum gets rid of waste, water, and carbon dioxide and acts as a simple excretory system. To have water into the central cavity, the flagella of the collar cells beat to create a current. Water, nutrients, and oxygen enter through the incurrent pore and stick to the collar cells. Collar cells digest the nutrients and transport the digested nutrients to the amoeboid cells for further digestion. Oxygen also diffuses through the collar cells to the amoeboid cells. From here, the amoeboid cells act as a simple circulatory system and transports the nutrients and oxygen to other parts of the sponge. The amoeboid cells then will transport carbon dioxide and waste from the other parts of the sponge back to the ectoderm. Waste and carbon dioxide will enter the central cavity through the collar cells. From here, water, waste, and carbon dioxide leave through the excurrent pore called the osculum. Now that there's some background knowledge of what a sponge is, let's take a deeper look into the economic importance that sponges have in Southeast Asia. In Southeast Asia, sponges are imperative to the traditional Chinese market and are used in many different remedies. They are used as muscle relaxants and as antibacterial, antifungal, and anti-inflammatory agents. Sponges are used in TCM, or commonly known as traditional Chinese medicine. For example, the Zi Shao Hua formula uses the fresh water sponge, which, according to TCM, reinforces the kidney to strengthen yang, secure essence, and reduce urination. TCM is an enormous economic market in Southeast Asia, grossing from six to 20 billion US dollars in Southeast Asia alone. Although sponges aren't the only marine organism used in TCM, they still play a massive role. According to a study at the Shanghai Tiao Tong University, more than 5,000 different compounds are attributed to sponges in marine natural medical practices. This essentially means the sponges make up approximately 30% of all known marine natural products. A key economic factor in developing nations in marine agriculture, also called sea farming. Many parts of Southeast Asia still have a long way to go in their development. 
despite having modern urban capitals like Kuala Lumpur, Singapore, and Bangkok, a lot of their economies are still based on small scale artisanal sea farming. And sponges are relevant in the process. In Asia and the Pacific, sponges are grown through mariculture, which has mainly been in the domain of small scale farmers, providing employment to coastal populations, augmenting their food supply, and contributing significantly to the foraging exchange earnings of the producing countries. The production cost is relatively low because sponges fail to feed. So artificial feeds are unnecessary. The vast coastal waters of the Asia Pacific countries are conducive to mariculture, but accessibility problems and pollution have hampered the expansion of the industry. Sponges play a large role in the economy within many parts of Southeast Asia, and without them, lots of money would be lost and ecosystems would suffer. Traditional Chinese medicine is very reliant on sponges to create the remedies that are desired throughout the world. And as nations in Southeast Asia continue to develop and personal care becomes a staple in people's lives, I believe that traditional Chinese medicine will be adopted by more people and sponges will continue to serve an important purpose. However, as mentioned, many places in Southeast Asia are still very underdeveloped. To continue developing the region, sea farming for sponges will help people reach greater economic prosperity. Overall, sponges play a key role, not only for the health of Southeast Asians, but also for the region's economy.